Happy October, Shoreline Washington 2024. We have your real estate market update for the month so that you can see how your property is performing compared to the rest of the market and how your equity is building. If you're thinking about buying or selling a home, you're gonna to wanna to watch this so you know what to expect out in the marketplace. I'm Shoreline Realtor Emily Cressy. I'm here to help you interpret the data so you can make good decisions. Here on this graph, we have King County, the city of Shoreline, and the city of Seattle for a point of comparison. The city of Shoreline is green, and over here on the side chart, you can see the year-over-year -year median sales price change, and the city of Shoreline is up 4.5%, which seems great, but it's unfortunate that it's lagging both the Seattle market and the King County market. However, I do think that we can see that if it's in a good area, these other markets will carry it up. Perhaps there's some other kind of data going on. So one of the things I like to do is change to a rolling three month perspective on the data. And we can also compare residential versus condominium pricing. Sometimes also new construction versus old construction has an impact. So you can see here at the beginning of the year in January, we were at kind of our low point, very typical kind of those colder winter months. It's dark, it's Christmas, nobody wants to move. That's when we typically see our lowest home prices of the year. And we were at 771,000 for a median home price at that point. We went up in the spring as expected and then came down in the summer as expected. There's typically a lull in the summer, everyone's out enjoying the weather, they're traveling, not as many transactions take place for those couple of months. In autumn, we tend to see another surge, not typically as strong as spring, but a nice one. So we're going up right now from August to September. We may go up again from September to October and then expect to see some softening after that. Um, but we didn't see quite as much of a dip in the Seattle and King County markets. So something was a little bit off about Shoreline at this point. If we look at residential homes, this is a single family and some townhouses compared to condominiums, we'll see that there was still a dip in the single family market during the summer. If we look at just condominiums, the dip is more pronounced. So for some reason, Shoreline is not as popular or we're not having as high median home prices. Now, this could also be an indication of other factors like a lot of new construction in the area. Uh, with our arrival of the light rail and the light rail going live, there's been a lot of uh, sales with the new construction near the light rail. Those are not always premium locations. The townhomes that are there are often on busy streets. It's kind of higher density. It's near the freeway. So if we're looking at that data compared to single family homes, freestanding, you know, often Richmond Beach by themselves, it's not necessarily a complete apples to apples comparison. So I know that there's still a lot of new construction and new home sales going on. So we can also take a look at uh, the new construction median home prices here. And you can see on this green line that those have gone down quite a bit. And whereas at the beginning of the year, those median home prices were 1.1 million. Now later in the year, it's 470,000. Uh, and this is for condominiums. Let's look at houses as well. On the other side, the housing prices went way up. Then Shoreline, 16 homes, 10 homes, seven homes, six homes, two homes sold for this residential new construction. So we actually have a very small data set here and that's likely to be throwing off our data. King County and Seattle have many more transactions taking place, hundreds of transactions, rather than a handful of transactions. So their data is gonna be a lot more smooth and reliable. Ours is going to be much more volatile if a nice home sold, if a not nice home sold, et cetera. Let's look at previously owned construction. Uh, now we have over 100 data points that's gonna be a little bit more reliable. So residential, previously owned did have that little summer dip but it seems it seems to be relatively steady and our median home price there is 868 and we're actually up eight percent over the year over year so we're not needing to be as worried as it might have initially appeared for condominiums in shoreline the median home sale price of used property has actually gone up and is now at 450,000 with no dip. So it's very interesting. You can see kind of the way that we pull the data, what data we look at, 
has a big impact on kind of the results that we're seeing and how we're feeling about it. The things to keep in mind are looking at the greater market, looking at how it's performing relative to Seattle and King County will give us a clue because Shoreline is a smaller sample size. And the more we drill down into that, the more things can get a little bit bouncy and less reliable. I also wanna put your attention here on this chart. This is homes for sale. And what we can see is that Shoreline is way down here in the green. It's not a very high volume, but it is trending up as our Seattle and King County. So as interest rates have been coming down this year, we're getting over that locked out effect. We're past, everyone had those 3% interest rate loans and then the interest rate was 7% and they didn't really see themselves selling their house and buying a new one. They had just refinanced, et cetera. Now a little more time has gone by and interest rates have started to come down, which reduces that locked in effect and makes it a little bit easier for people to move. And as time goes by, more likely that they will move, even if you know they did refinance because of life changes, jobs, kids, uh, marriages, deaths, those types of things. So we're seeing a lot more inventory come onto the market here. More homes are for sale. There's more for buyers to choose from, which means that with supply and demand, there's more supply and therefore prices are not being forced up at the rate that they may have been in the past when the supply of homes was much lower. And finally, I always like to look at days on market, which tells us how long it takes before you uh, should expect to have your home under contract with a buyer. And here in the, the Seattle area, we're seeing an average of 12 days or a median of 12 days, I should say, and Shoreline, it's eight. So shoreline homes are still desirable. They're still selling more quickly than average. And that's a great sign. We can also look at average. So median means if you take all the sales and cut them in half, what's that, that, what's that number in the middle? Average is if you take all the homes and you average them out to get the mean, then what are we looking at? And it's closer to three weeks here. And what that tells us is that there are some homes that are sitting on the market longer. So if you have had your home on the market for, let's say, the median amount of time between 10 days and 20 days here, the average amount of time, and you haven't gotten it sold, that's an indication that something is wrong with your listing. Either it's not presenting well on the MLS, the pictures are bad, the interior is bad, the staging, the lighting, something is going wrong. If it's all of that is on point, then you've got to look at your price. I'm sorry to tell you, but you might be overpriced for the market because you should really be getting people out to look at the home quickly. And then we can see here on the shows to pending, if your home has had around 10 people through it to look at it, potential buyers, and nobody has made an offer, that means once they get out to the property, eh, they're just not feeling it. They're just not sold on the property. And it's up to you to get some feedback, have your agent call all those folks that have come by, see what your, you know, is there a bad smell? Is it too small? Is it the power station in the back? Like what's going on and what can we do to make buyers feel better about those things? And almost all answers, all solutions can be solved by adjusting the price because the market is telling you your price is not correct. They are not excited about it at the price that you're offering. There's something else better at that price point that they're being drawn toward instead. The lower your price, different set of buyers will come and they will say, wow, this is the nicest thing in the market at this price. I'm very excited to buy your home. So anyway, that's that. I really appreciate your watching here. My goal is to help you as a Shoreline homeowner understand what's happening in the real estate market, what's going on with your equity. And if you're contemplating buying or selling a home, that you have good data to help you make good decisions. Again, my name is Realtor Emily Cressy here in the Seattle market and living in Shoreline. Love to help you out. If you have any questions or want me to dial this in for you further, drop me a line. You can reach me at homeproassociates.com or you can text the word home, H-O-M-E, home, to my phone number, 206 578 3438. And I'll look forward to getting the process started with you that way. Have a great day and I'll talk with you soon.